Welcome to our next edition of Davie County's COVID-19 updates. We appreciate you joining us weekly for uh, these sessions. We want to make them informative to, for all of our citizens and uh, just really appreciate those who've uh, commented and uh, provided information to us. At the end of our uh, presentation today, you'll continue to see uh, the link that we provide every week to you. Uh, we encourage all of our residents and citizens to get uh, any questions or, or uh, items that they want clarified. We look for themes every week and we try to address those. We also every week try to identify the good things happening in the midst of uh, a lot of hard times and uh, today is no different. We have a, a great lineup for you and we'll uh, start talking to each one here shortly. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank uh, the North Carolina General Assembly members, um, the House and Senate both uh, work to develop some relief bills for uh, uh, everyone from small businesses to uh, government entities uh, to just help folks get through this right now. Also those impacted by the COVID-19 uh, crisis and, and those who are out of work right now. Uh, so we appreciate the General Assembly and their work there. And we also uh, continue to pray for those who are impacted from families who are sick uh, to individuals who are impacted by their work. Uh, and also um, here at the, at the county government level, our board of commissioners just uh, continues to thank our staff for the great work that they do in every single department. Uh, and for our community partners out there that continue to uh, just help uh, support those who are in need right now and, and all of our, uh, all of those partners. There's so many to name, but we just thank everyone so much and our continued prayers uh, go out to those who are impacted. Uh, we hope uh, today we'll, we'll give you some good information. Uh, in addition to thanking the General Assembly, we also um, received some additional guidance uh, from Raleigh yesterday. Uh, the governor passed uh, the most recent executive order, number 138. Uh, we will have information for you uh, on both the Davie County website uh, as well as the Chamber of Commerce website very soon to be able to get information out that can be useful for our businesses uh, and also uh, many institutions in the county uh, to really have a, a resource document and information that, that can help them as they think uh, about phased reopening. The governor has laid out a three-phased reopening plan. Uh, the local entities uh, of government uh, and our school system have all been um, uh, given those directives and uh, we're currently going to experience the first phase uh, effective May 8th at 5 p.m. And so be looking for information about uh, phase one on those websites I mentioned, but also on our social media sites. We'll be getting those out to you. Uh, we do hope the community finds that information value added uh, and we'll be getting that out as soon as possible. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, please check our social media sites, as we've told you before, uh, and we'll continue to uh, uh, let you know about those. In addition to, uh, to that information, um, our public health department continues to do an excellent job of trying to get information out. Uh, we've given you those websites before, too, and we'll continue to, to promote those both on social media, but uh, to push information out to our citizens and residents, but also uh, on our website and, and on our uh, social media platforms in, in a few departments uh, from public health to emergency services uh, and EMS, uh, but also on the county uh, social media sites and this YouTube channel that we're posting uh, these weekly updates uh, on. So we encourage you to continue to use those platforms to get information. We know people have different modes of the way they receive information, so we're doing the best we can uh, to try to get information to you. Uh, but again, please let us know every week if, if there's something we can do better. So on behalf of uh, Davie County Government, I'm John Eller, uh, County Manager here, and again, uh, we're just doing a fabulous job partnering with our community to try to um, uh, deal with this COVID-19 crisis as, as best we can. Uh, and today we have a, a special guest with us and I'd like to introduce Miss Debbie Crutchfield from uh, A Storehouse for Jesus. We know how important the storehouse is uh, for our community every day. Uh, but in light of this recent crisis, 
they're even more noticed uh, because of how much they're doing in the midst of all this to even help people even more and and how difficult this crisis has to be with uh, keeping volunteers uh, going but also uh, those who are in need I'm sure are very much greater now than even before so Ms. Crutchfield we thank you so much for joining us we appreciate all that the storehouse does for us uh, and we want to just allow you a few minutes to, to tell the residents and the community the great work that you're doing and 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 how we might be able to help you so we'll turn it over to you okay thank you mr eller and i'd just like to begin by saying how grateful i am to have this opportunity to to share what's going on and to to thank our uh county for all that they've been doing throughout this time um i'm going to focus on just a few of our ministries right now that we're focusing on for the uh, co during the COVID time, I'm going to begin with the distribution ministry. We have modified this program. Um, it is a drive-through food-only program. We are open Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8:30 to 11 o'clock, and on Tuesdays, 12:30 to 3 o'clock, which is our normal hours. For distribution anyway. The difference is that the clients will come and drive around the building and um, check in with quote a receptionist and uh, then the volunteers will fill food orders which is depending on family size. Um, God has blessed us by um, just the providing exactly what we need. Um, we've, we've been blessed to get individuals donating food, churches donating food, businesses uh, offering help either financially or um, with, with specific food items. That's our focus right now is the food in the distribution because we want to be able to feed the hungry. Um, we have a skeletal crew here. They're very uh, dependable, and it's it's working wonderfully. There's very little wait for clients when they come and drive through. So um, that program is moving very very well right now. Um, as I said, the goal is to feed the hungry. Um, you do not need to be a client at Storehouse to receive our help. Um, we know that times are hard, and so all a person needs to do if they are hungry and in need of food is to come to Storehouse and just do this drive-through program. When we open up back on regular schedule, then if that client wants to become a, a – that person wants to become a client, then they're welcome to do that just through our regular process. But right now, we, we want to feed anybody that is in, in need. Um, the medical ministry has modified their program also. The clinic itself is closed, but there are staff from the medical clinic that are answering phone calls, um, assisting the chronic care patients that we have, uh, or anybody who may call and leave a message on their phone um, if they're fearful that they have COVID. So um, sometimes they will also get people that walk up and need emergency help and the staff is here there, once again, uh, very low staff numbers, but they're here to re make referrals to the hospital if it's necessary. and and just meet their needs. Uh, the medical and pharmacy, medical clinic per se is closed except for the call-ins. The pharmacy is also open Monday and Wednesday from 8.30 to 11. This is to provide for medicine refills if needed. Um, so all of the above right there just want everyone to know that we're following the state guidelines ourselves. We're wearing masks, we're wearing gloves, we're doing our social distancing in all of these areas to, to uh, protect 
those who need us and also our own staff. But I just want to give a shout out to the volunteers that we have. And um, they've been great making all of these uh, three programs a big success right now. The um, community support has been fantastic. Um, I'm just kind of blown away by uh, the calls I get. Calls to me, not me calling for help, but calls offering help here, asking whatever they could do. And it's, it's just it's just God working through Davie County, I feel like, on that. Um, so that's basically what we're, we're doing here. Um, needs that I would say we have right now are continued prayers and um, just to get the word out to people that come to Storehouse for Jesus, uh, we, we can help. And thank you, Mr. Eller, for letting me share. Thank you, Ms. Crutchfield. And and I know how important you not only are to to um, uh, helping those who are hungry, but also the health care that you mentioned. I know our public health department uh, and health and human services folks uh, very much appreciate what you do in addition to the whole community and county. And uh, again, we just thank you. Uh, for, for all that you're doing and thank you for that update. Uh, and, and we uh, we appreciate you taking time out for us. So we will transition now to our superintendent of schools, Mr. Jeff Wallace, uh, to tell us a little bit about what's going on at the school level. Mr. Wallace. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Eller. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, as Mr. Eller mentioned, the governor's executive order 138 uh, did lay out some uh, guidelines uh, pertaining to community and some of the information there pertains to schools and one of those uh, that's with gatherings of crowds and different things which is relevant to schools because we are trying to make plans around one of the most important events that we do each year and that and, and that is graduation we are uh, <clears throat> we're holding off plans as long as possible just to be sure or try to make sure that um, we can hold as close to a traditional graduation ceremony as possible, but as we are well aware that that is not going to be the case. Typically, we have four to 5,000 people that attends the, the David County High School's graduation. And then, of course, we got our early college high school's graduation, but with a lot less students, but at the same time, both equally import, as important. But we're looking at virtual options. We're looking at maybe large gatherings in cars, where people have to remain in their cars. But uh, we will continue to work on that to, to do what's best in the interest of children. And one way we are determining that is we've got a task force that's put together that we're meeting with uh, the graduation committees at both the high schools. Uh, also, we're talking to students and talking to staff. And a survey will go out soon, probably in the next few days, to uh, students, to all seniors, to uh, help get gather their opinion and their, from their, them and their families to help us make that decision. So we will, um, we're, this was a difficult one because it's so important, but we are working diligently and we'll make decisions based upon the guidance from the governor's office and, um, and then what our children and families want and obviously deserve. <clears throat> the, other, the other piece that, um, important piece regarding schools is the General Assembly presented um, uh, both chambers presented uh, bills to the governor who signed, who did sign legislation this week or latter part of last week to um, that will impact the school calendar. They are typically, this, we, the school district, gets our calendar out at, right at least almost a year in advance, at least eight or nine months in advance for families to make plans. But next year, the <clears throat> the new legislation indicates that school or mandates that schools will start on August the 17th. We had planned to start, I believe it was August 25th, so this is gonna back us up about a week earlier. Uh, the calendar committee will gather this week via Zoom and put together their thoughts and a new calendar will be developed this week, presented to board members early next week. And we are planning to have a new calendar out by the end of next week. That's our goal. It should not, we should be able to do that. We've been working on that, anticipating 
that this um, that this may happen. Um, so again, be, I would encourage families and 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 folks to be on the lookout for a new calendar that will be coming out hopefully the end of next week. The we I continue to communicate weekly with the um, Department of Public Construction, the State Board of Education, and superintendents across the the um, across the state to uh, to make decisions to how to best um, educate our children through our remote learning plan. And uh, the big topic moving forward, which I will have more information as we continue to podcast, is about what re-entry of school will look like next year. Still a lot of questions. We don't have the answers. A lot of questions around summer activities, summer athletics, band camps, kindergarten, kindergarten camps, science camps. We don't know if those can take place yet. Uh, uh, and uh, we're not sure what will happen with fall sports yet. Where all that's being considered, and we're getting we're getting information or direction from our health departments and from the governor and the general assembly. So we'll continue to work. And again, thank you for the opportunity. I hope everyone stays safe. And encourage you, please, if you have questions regarding schools, to reach out to us. We'll be glad to help. Thank you very very much, Mr. Eller. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. We thank you every week, and we mean it uh, from our hearts. We know all that you and your staff are doing and in a very different way right now to make sure our children and families are fed and to help our essential workers with some childcare. Very important right now, but also what your teaching assistants and uh, uh, are doing to support all those efforts, but also your teachers uh, to continue to engage their students uh, any way they can online. So uh, all of us are doing business differently. You're a great example of that. We appreciate the innovation and teamwork that you and your staff have shown. So thank you again. All right, we'll transition now to uh, Ms. Suzanne Wright with Davie County Health and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. Eller. Um, there have been no new lab confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Davie since May 1st, so that's a little good news to start off with. Um, there are still four active cases in the county and those individuals remain in isolation. Uh, this week, the CDC updated guidance in eight different areas, but I wanna focus on the uh, release from isolation guidance because this guidance impacts return to work and other activities for those with COVID-19. So previously, the guidelines for release included seven days since the person started showing symptoms and then three days fever-free without taking Tylenol or any kind of fever-reducing medication. And the person also had to show improvement in respiratory symptoms. So now the guidance for release from isolation includes 10 days since the person started showing symptoms and still the th three days uh, fever free without using medication and improvements in respiratory symptoms like coughing and, and shortness of breath. Um, so basically the CDC has added three more days to the isolation guidance and I wanted to make everybody aware of that this week. Other than that, we continue to test our priority populations and we are moving into uh, the reopening phase and how that's going to impact us and with contact tracing and testing moving forward. And that, that's my update today. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Uh, we know, as, as you told the commissioners Monday night, there's a lot of unsung heroes. Uh, Health and Human Services has several different departments in it and several different um, subunits. And uh, we know how hard uh, your social workers work with adults. Uh, but also children and families, and 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 that work sometimes isn't visible or noticed. We also uh, know how many of your income maintenance folks are assisting people with uh, health-related needs and and food assistance right now. And uh, notwithstanding your your senior services, continue to get meals to people uh, and coordinate your volunteers and and our deputies stepping up to help with that and and, and continue to serve veterans uh, and also those who are uh, experience in domestic violence. A lot of people that that the public never sees, and uh, but but do a tremendous, a tremendous amount of work. So we appreciate very much all that you and your staff are doing. Uh, and then every day, uh, the nurses who are answering phones and testing people. Uh, just a lot of people impacted right now. And thank you for that. We'll transition now into. Uh, Sheriff Hartman's update uh, to give us a little bit about what's going on in his area. Sheriff? Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, I'd like to say that we're still here and operational. Uh, we're continuing to operate in full staff. Uh, there's not a lot of 
things to report in that area. Um, the courts are still closed for general do work. Uh, nothing's changed there. I don't anticipate any of that changing throughout the entire month of May. So you'll still need to do appointments with the clerk's office, et cetera, if you have court business. But I also would like to take a minute. Several folks today have uh, thanked the community, and I'd like to do that too. The, the community has been tremendous in supporting the sheriff's office. Way too many people to mention. So I'll just have a few I'd like to mention in particular. Mr. Jody Gatton is a young man that uh, called one day and said he could make face shields and he made enough face shields for every employee at the sheriff's office to have a face shield and we have a few extras. Uh, Mr. Kuntz, Jack Kuntz and his wife, they uh, made cakes and delivered cakes to the sheriff's office and the detention office for the employees. Uh, Krishna's Mercy too, which is the parent company of several retail businesses in Davie County. They delivered a truckload of foodstuffs, drinks, et cetera, to feed deputies, detention staff, whatever we needed to do with it at the beginning of this event. And we greatly appreciate that. Uh, and Green Meadows Church, every Wednesday evening has fed every deputy and detention officer that's on duty a meal uh, in the evening for the last three weeks. And we'd just like to thank them. And lastly, I want to thank some of my staff. It's actually Correctional Officers Appreciation Week. And so I'd like to thank the officers at the detention center. Most of, most of those folks are not in the public view and the public doesn't necessarily see them like they do patrol deputies, but they are a key component of the Sheriff's Office operations. We couldn't function without them. And the last two months has been a really busy trying time for them as they've adjusted procedures and policies and how things operate to uh, attempt to keep this virus out of our detention center. So I just really would like to say thank you to them for all they do. And I'll turn that back over to you, Mr. Eller. Thank you, Sheriff. Good reminder of, again, of how much our community uh, is, is caring for everybody. So we appreciate you and your staff and all you do for us. Uh, Mr. Brian Bird with our Emergency Services Department uh, will give us a quick update. Mr. Bird. Thank you, Mr. Eller. Good afternoon. Um, no changes in our readiness postures and emergency services. Uh, much like what the sheriff said, we are fully staffed and we're glad to be that way. Our responders continue to adapt to every change of protocols and recommendations that come from the governor, uh, that come from North Carolina Emergency Management also. Um, a focus is, uh, this week has been placed on supplying Medicare and Medicaid certified nursing homes and assisted living homes with personal protective equipment. Uh, the White House Coronavirus Task Force has coordinated with our state emergency managers, our local emergency managers to help supply these facilities with gowns, masks, gloves, uh, and clean supply and, and trainings. Um, all this is in the effort uh, to safeguard one of the most vulnerable populations we have in our county. So we appreciate all those efforts. Um, I'm gonna tag on to some of the things that uh, uh, Suzanne said the other night because they're, um, they're worth saying. Uh, this coronavirus task force and this, this new push they have to look after nursing homes. Um, I mean, e even though that's being uh, promoted as a new strategy, I, I need everybody to know that this has been accomplished every day by our Health and Human Services staff here in Davie County. Uh, these pros have been providing oversight, training, uh, they've been doing contact tracing for the entire duration of this emergency. Even when coronavirus is not here, this staff is tasked daily with always being prepared for health emergencies. Um, I've been, it's been great to work with them even before coronavirus came. I've learned a lot from them myself. Um, we've had um, cases in our nursing homes here in Davie County but through the uh, Health and Human Services staff, through, through their, de their dedication, uh, through their planning and, and their training, uh, we've not had the tragedies that some of the other states have had, uh, and the families haven't suffered the way families in other states have. So uh, my hats off to these guys, my respects to you all. Um, lastly, um, even though coronavirus keeps coming, there are always other things on the horizon for emergency management. Uh, this is our hurricane preparedness week for North Carolina. Uh, if you look at our emergency services webpage, uh, we're promoting information that helps all our citizens get ready for the next emergency. And so uh, I would encourage everybody to check this out, this site, and um, 
reach out to us if you think that we can help you. And that's all I have today, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Bird. You raise a good point too, um, and, and I think sometimes we overlook this. I know everybody on this call, we, we probably talk more frequently than people know and, and have teamed really well throughout this whole event, but our early mitigation efforts uh, have really paid off. You know, when you when you look at our, our numbers compared to some other counties, some may say, well, you know, we really don't have a problem in Davie County, and I think many of us have said uh, truly, because we got ahead of this, and and that doesn't mean that we haven't had people impacted. We obviously have, but the teamwork uh, from all those involved have really helped the spread of this, and and our our citizens also working uh, through this process as well, and uh, and partnering with with not only our facilities but the various people we come in contact with. So none of this could be achieved without everybody uh, teaming together, but also without the cooperation of uh, of our partners in the community uh, who are working with us on those mitigation efforts. So kudos to you and and your paramedic team and 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 uh, firemen and and uh, emergency management staff and the EOC folks that are are working to help, but also uh, uh, to Health and Human Services and and others uh, for partnering together to get uh, ahead of this thing. So we do appreciate that and and those numbers, you know, sometimes don't always reflect those things, but we're uh, while one case is more than we want, we're very happy with the mitigation efforts uh, that we've we've attempted here compared to what we've seen in other places. So I, I want to thank everybody for that. Uh, so thank you for that update. We'll transition now uh, into our 911 communications update. We got Mr. Rodney Pierce on the line. Mr. Pierce. Yes, sir. Thank you. At 911, we also we have no significant changes since our last update. Uh, just want to remind everyone calls regarding travel business op travel business operations or those questions regarding the governor's phase one plan. Those questions need to be directed directly to state resources. Uh, simple number to remember uh, for information is the state's information number, which is 211. That's displayed on the screen. Uh, 211, uh, that's a good information resource for all state functions. Um, reminding also everyone, please do not call 911 for general questions. Uh, just overall, uh, we're still asking our screening questions for medical calls and law enforcement calls uh, when applicable. Those two are to ensure responder safety. Uh, also, that's just a good way to help us triage and uh, get the citizens the right help when uh, you need it most. That's the most update I've got from the 911 Communication Center. Thank you, Mr. Eller. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Appreciate all you and your dispatchers are doing answering those calls and uh, helping us. We'll transition now to Mr. Johnny Lambert with our Public Utilities Department. Johnny. Thank you, Mr. Eller. So just want to go back from the utilities and kind of give a quick update that we're still working under the executive order of there's no disconnections or late penalties being charged to all the customers for the water and sewer. Um, that is still in place until June 1st. Um, we're waiting on if we hear anything else of moving forward, if this is an extended order or what we do after May 1st or after June 1st. So <clears throat> we're still working underneath that. There's been some new guidance um, sent out from the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality, the public water um, section, on buildings that have been vacant and unused pipes. The water set in these pipes and the chlorine has dissipated. So um, we have this information on social media, on the main page of the Davie County Public Utilities website. Um, just telling people, just telling them when they start opening their buildings back up, um, to flush the lines real good, run some water through them, get clean water in there. So um, the chlorine, the disinfectant that we put in the water, make sure there's there's no kind of um, growth or waterborne bacteria that's, that's built up in the pipe. So that information is out there. And if anyone has any questions on that, they can call um, my office, which is 336-753-6091. We'll be glad to, to help or answer any questions they have. Um, moving forward, trying to get these businesses and the water clean and fresh back in again. And that's all we have for today, Mr. Lowe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. We know how hard your team works to uh, 
to keep our water uh, going, but also treated. So, uh, and, and our lines working the way they need to, to get it to us. So we appreciate you and your team again. Um, in closing, just a few things for our citizenry and, and residents to be aware of. Uh, mentioned some of this earlier on our website, we have a link, uh, uh, a button on our homepage at the county homepage, uh, daviecountync.gov, uh, to be able to take you to our uh, public health COVID-19 site to get critical information there. We've also got a button on that website for a list of county operations um, and, and how that's working as we speak. Uh, we've also encouraged all of you to continue to like our Davie County Facebook page, our Health and Human Services Facebook page, our Emergency Services Facebook page, and our Davie County Government YouTube channel. We are using all those areas to be able to get information out uh, to you, so please visit all of those as well. And last but not least, I think I say this every week, but if you haven't completed your census, now is a great time to do that. Uh, we encourage everybody to go to our website, daviecounts2020.com. Uh, to be able to get information about how important the census is in our community. And also, uh, if you want to go to the actual site to uh, go ahead and complete your census, uh, you can go to 2020census.gov or call 844-330-2020 uh, to make sure your house is counted. So much uh, is at stake for our census. Uh, so we encourage our citizens to do that. I want to thank all of our speakers today for taking time out to, again, come together every week. Uh, we have a, a great team and I'm very appreciative of everyone. Uh, we'd also like to thank Ms. Crutchfield for joining us today and please get your question or comments to us and we'll reconvene during our next uh, session together. Thank you very much.